Hi, I'm Lauren Berger. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society understands the many benefits of oral therapies for patients with myeloma. Along with the benefits comes a shift in control from the healthcare team to the patient. In this program, we will discuss the importance of taking treatments as prescribed by the doctor and what doctors, nurses, social workers, and caregivers can do to help patients overcome potential barriers to managing their own treatment regimens. We'll hear from Dr. Kenneth Shane and nurses Beth Finley Oliver and Leslie Lowersdorf of Moffitt Cancer Center as they discuss the importance of medication adherence and offer tips and strategies for successful communication with the healthcare team and treatment management. We have a patient now who has failed current therapy. We need to put him on a new set of drugs. Um, I think an all oral regimen would be appropriate for him. Um, but I want to make sure that we're doing the right thing for him and to make sure that we give him the right responsibilities and update him and make sure he's ready for this all therapy. Do you think we're going to have any troubles with that? No, I think that'd be great because this will give him the convenience to travel. And uh, he's pretty good at keeping in touch with me as well. What do you think the side effects? Do you think he'll be okay with those? Well, I think we're going to have to think about side effects, which are, I think, really important, especially in all oral therapy because they're going to be at home for a lot of it and they have to manage some of the side effects and let us know what's going on. My name is Ken. I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma five years ago. My name is Henry, and I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma approximately four years ago. Uh, treatments I had um, with a lot of radiation, I continued until uh, about um, 11 months later before I actually went on a pill for the myeloma. I'm looking forward to taking pills as opposed to getting a shot. So multiple myeloma is a disease or malignancy of plasma cells, which are cells that are part of our immune system, our white cells that live in our bone marrow. And unfortunately, they start growing uncontrollably and start causing lots of problems, both locally and throughout the body. It's a disease that causes essentially issues with bone marrow function, so you become anemic, you lose your red cells, or can't produce red cells appropriately. It also causes things to fall apart in terms of your bones, you become fragile and weak. These days there's a lot of hope in the world of myeloma in terms of new therapies that have been developed and are on the horizon. The hope and the reason for it is really because we've come a long way from the initial therapies we use to treat myeloma. Myeloma treatment of the last half a century or so has really changed markedly. Uh, in the last half a decade, even more so, with brand new drugs uh, and therapies out there that are the consequence of lots of individuals participating in clinical trials, letting us know how effective these therapies are and how tolerable these therapies are. Uh, really, in the last two years, we've had five new agents approved. And really, what's interesting about these drugs is a number of these now are oral, so they're, they're medications you can take by mouth. They are pills, which really opens up brand new opportunities for our patients to help take care of themselves and take their therapy at home, therefore not be tied to institutions or infusion centers or doctor's offices, which make these very, very appealing on one level. But it's also critical to make sure that we understand this also opens up the door for other issues, which means things like adherence. The World Health Organization defines adherence as the extent to which a person's behavior in taking medication or making lifestyle changes agrees with recommendations from a healthcare provider. Well, it's much more convenient. I don't have to drive all the way over to Tampa. That gives me more time to fish. Uh, pills let, give me more mobility. I can travel around, do things, and take the pills. As soon as I get my drug supply, which is once a month, I put the pills in one of these seven-day uh, little segregated things you get at the drugstore. Then it's sitting out right on a little chest. And before I go to bed, I take that and without fail, and I don't have any problem with that at all because I understand that this is my lifeline and uh, it's for my, my benefit. It's my health on the line. I'm responsible for that. So are pills easier to take than infusional agents? And I think there are two ways of looking at it. Generally, I would think that pills are going to be easier for our patients to take. They're on their own time. They can take them at their own house. They don't have to come in and go through the confusion of all that happens in a hospital or in an 
infusion center, and doctor's office, et cetera. Uh, but it's really important for our patients to be able to make sure they can manage the pills and take them appropriately. Uh, some of them have relatively simple schedules, some of them have more complicated schedules. So education for our patients and education how and when and the importance of taking these medications in myeloma are critical for them to take it. But in general, I would argue, really suggest that taking medications at home would be simpler for our patients. Adherence to an oral therapy means that patients are expected to agree to the therapy recommendation from the healthcare team, take the correct medicine, take the correct dose, take medication in the correct quantity, take medication at the correct time, never miss a dose, never take an extra dose, take medication for the prescribed amount of time. So being on oral medications, a lot of the responsibility is now on you. Because you have to remember, I have to take this pill. I have to take this pill every day. Not at the exact same time, but in the same ballpark. So if you're taking it before bedtime, bedtime can be 9, 10, 11. That's a fine window. But you still need to adhere to it every single day at around the same time to make sure you're getting the most benefit from that medication. And I think oftentimes, too, that when patients are on IV or injection, that brings them to us to where we can ask certain questions to bring out what we're looking for. Oral therapies, as you know, they go home, we don't see them again, sometimes for three to four weeks. So it's very important for these patients to keep in touch with us. Let us know, do you need help with co-pays? Is it side effects? Are you forgetting to remember? Because if you're forgetting, then I have to go to you and say, hey, look, this isn't working out for the patient. Side effects from oral treatments are similar to those of intravenous treatments. Patients need to know what side effects to report and who on their healthcare team to contact for support. Many symptoms can be managed at home. However, symptoms can worsen quickly, and patients need to be instructed on what to do in these situations. I would be quick to report those side effects, especially if they're undesirable, to uh, my medical team, and uh, she would decide whether it was significant enough. One of the major reasons I think patients probably stop taking oral therapies is if they're starting to have untoward side effects or side effects they weren't expected to have or don't know how to manage. So I think it's really critical for, again, us to educate the patients as to what might happen along the way so they can either be prepared for it with supportive care or let us know what's going on so we know what they're doing in terms of, of stopping therapy versus maintaining and getting better supportive care. It's very important to make sure you take your medication every day. Skipping doses, you're not getting the same concentration in your bloodstream. It's not keeping the disease to the level that we want it. We want it at the lowest possible level that we can detect to ensure that you have the longest life possible. And if side effects are a major thing that's keeping you from taking the drug all the time, then you need to talk to us about it. I think it's very important to always keep the nurses involved. You have to talk to us. We can help, but we can't help if we don't know. And if your appointment isn't for another month or two months or even two weeks and something's really bothering you, you just need to pick up the phone and call us because we're always here for you. And believe me, I could pop a lot of questions over a period of time because it's my health and I don't want to leave anything unanswered when I leave there. With oral therapy comes a shift in control and responsibility from the healthcare provider to the patient. This can present challenges, especially for complicated therapy regimens. Patients should consider using reminders that work for them to make it easier to take their medicine as prescribed. Uh, very important for us also to give education, calendars to patients to keep them on schedule. Yeah, other tricks I've told people is setting an alarm on your cell phone. People have their cell phones attached to them 24-7. So if you can't remember to put it next to your toothbrush when you're brushing your teeth, then set an alarm, take my pill, every day. Adherence can be important for a number of reasons. So one is Obviously, we want to make sure that the drugs are in the patient so that they're working appropriately or getting the maximum effect from the therapy. But it's also important, especially in the context of clinical trials and things like that, that we're managing their therapy and they are, in fact, receiving so the toxicities and the efficacy are well documented and can be quantitative over the course of studies. We know how to then to use them. And I think for the most part, patients who participate in clinical trials um, do very well with that. They also have the additional benefit of having clinical trial coordinators that are you know, capturing diaries and logs and things of that nature. But without question, there are patients who forget from time to time to take the pills that are part of the therapy. Um, though it is important to emphasize this, but our patients are human and so on occasion they'll forget a pill or two. I'm part of a study, um, a trial if you will, and it's important for the trial 
So it'd be taking a long time or so they know if the trial is working. So it's, it does not only harm me, it could harm other people if, if, I, if they have a false reading on how well the, the meds are doing. If I don't take them on time, they tell us to go ex right by their directions. In terms of what works for me about taking meds and taking them properly, I try to read up on what the pill is and what it does and the side effects. I also try to be sure I understand when I'm supposed to take it in what intervals. And uh, occasionally, uh, because we are dealing with multiple myeloma and it does impact the immune system, you've got other things going on, like MRSA or some other things or some other infections. So you're dealing with antibiotics as well as some um, pain pills as well as a number of different kinds of pills. When that happens, I lay out a tablet and I make a list of all the pills I take when I'm taking them and keep time track of those things. Especially important, if I'm taking any kind of pain med, I want to know when I last took it, when I'm due to take it next, and I write that down. And if I feel like I'm not getting that right, I ask my caregiver to go ahead and administer pills for me. And I think with the clinical trial that Ken is going to go on, there's often diaries that's associated with the clinical trial to help patients remember when to take their therapies, when to take their drugs, what time. They'll be able to write it down and bring it with you to the appointment so we can review it and go over with the, with the patient. And I had done that for three and a half years, so I'm expecting to do it again. And these are things that are critical for our patients to undergo and maintain, is adherence to the therapies as they're given and as they're dosed, because this is how we've studied them. This is how the trials have told us how to utilize these medications in terms of their efficacy as well as the tolerance. So really important to think about how we can balance those two issues, the freedom or the autonomy these oral agents are giving our patients, but balancing that with their responsibility or the onus on them to take those drugs appropriately. Oral cancer therapies have benefits for myeloma patients. Since myeloma typically cannot be cured, but can be managed over a long period of time with treatment, a treatment model that includes long-term ongoing oral therapy can ease the burdens typically associated with treatment. Being on an oral regimen, you have the freedom to travel. You can go visit your grandson. So you're not tied down to this schedule where you're in the hospital, you know, twice a week, every week, and you only get a week break. You can go to Europe for a couple of months and get your lab shipped to us. You know, different people, different oral regimens will allow you to have a travel allowance because people need to live their life. You're going to have more freedom to do the things that you want to. Yes, you have cancer. Yes, you have myeloma but you're on treatment that allows you to live and have fun. As long as we can manage the side effects together, then hopefully life will be good. Doing that's led to a good quality of life. And uh, I've been able to enjoy a very fine quality of life, bicycling and fishing and just generally traveling and having a good time. And that's the goal of therapy, actually. If you think about it, on a disease that we're not curing in the 2016, we're getting there, it's more of a chronic condition. So it's all about quality of life and managing and balancing side effects, therapy, your life, mm -hmm. whether it be the Alaskan cruise this year, whatever it is, we need to get you there. So we need to do our job in controlling the disease, having a schedule that you understand, that you can do, and then take with you and travel and live your life. If you would like more information on what you've heard, or for other education materials or support, we encourage you to contact an information specialist at the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Information Resource Center by calling 800-955-4572 or email infocenter at lls.org. We would like to acknowledge and thank Takeda Oncology for their support, which helps LLS to bring you this information. On behalf of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, thank you for joining us today. We wish you well.